What's up everyone, Lance Hedrick here. If you remember a few months ago, we did a dial-in video using a dark roasted coffee that I've, I'd never used before. So today, after a lot of people requesting, we'll do one with light roasted coffee. So this is one I've not ever uh, put through an espresso machine. Ugo chose it for me. It's called Juice Box, bright and juicy. An elegant, juicy and floral cup with a zing citrus acidity. Strong lime and white floral notes and strawberry jam sweetness. A showcase for the very best Kenya has to offer from Wide Awake Coffee. So we're gonna be dialing this in today and I'll just be using, you know, a Gaja Classic Pro unmodded. And then I do have this new Barsetto 64 millimeter grinder, which I've also never uh, dialed in on espresso for. So you'll really be able to see how I play around with grind size and figure everything out. So the first thing that I do is I'm gonna check what size my basket is. I already know, but we're gonna go ahead and look at it anyway. Yep, all right, good. So this basket's gonna hold anywhere around 18 to 20 grams of coffee. That obviously depends on the roast level, how, how much density there is in your coffee. It could hold more, it could hold less, but for the most part, we're around 18 to 20 grams. So I'm gonna go ahead and weigh out a dose of, let's say 19, we'll just cut it right in the middle. We'll do 19 grams. And actually, with this new Barsetto, there's a scale in the dosing cup. Let's do 19. There we go, we're at 19.8. 19.2 is good enough for me. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find roughly a grind size that I think will work to hit nine bar of pressure. This is a 15, a 15 bar machine, but, Roughly the same. Once you hit up nine bar, once you go further pressure, it's not really going to cause cause that much difference. So I'm going to do roughly what I think is going to work here. Now I'm going to put my hand under. I'm down at. Uh, we'll go down to one. Since I've never used this, is I'm going to grab some. And we're too coarse. So whenever it's coarse, it's almost uh, like it's not powdery enough. You don't want it to be complete powder. But whenever it's coarse and it sounds like this. So it sounds like that, and whenever you're scratching it around, most of the particle sizes, you can kind of see the size looks similar to equal or sweet and low or one of those sugar substitutes. You're probably too coarse for espresso. So this is a little, this is a little too coarse. So I'm gonna go finer, and then we're gonna grind a little bit extra. Uh, so what I'm doing now is I'm squeezing with my fingertips, and I'm seeing if I can maintain a peak. So as you can see, there's a little peak here that's being maintained. It's not just falling back down. And I wanna see if it holds some of my fingerprints. If we have that, that's probably a decent place to start. And I could go maybe one tick finer, and then we'll be good to go ahead and start pulling. Ross droplet technique, little spritz. All right, so we've got our coffee ground. Now we're gonna just plop it into our portafilter. I highly recommend using a WDT with like 0.3 millimeter needles. You can take a wine cork or something and then buy some acupuncture needles, but this will greatly help you distribute your grounds. Now, of course, you don't have to do this, but this is going to give you a lot more consistency, so a lot less wasted shots. So we've got it all distributed. Now I'm going to give it a little tap, and then we tamp it down. Now, I like using a self-leveling tamper, so something that has kind of a collar on it like this which disallows you from going uneven, and then you can just push down as hard as you want without the fear of unevenly tamping. Now we're gonna lock this in, and we're gonna start our shot. With lighter roasted coffees, I like to always begin with a shot that is uh, a roughly one to two and a half ratio when you're using a classic nine bar machine. So the reason for this is because when you have a lighter, a more lightly roasted coffee, it becomes a little bit more difficult to get everything out of it because it's not as, uh, essentially it's not as soluble. So what you have with darker roasted coffees is they become more brittle and it's much easier to grab what it has available. So you don't need to push extraction as much. When it comes to lighter roasted coffees, coffees, there's less burnt off in the roasting process. So you're, you're, you kind of need to push further and further in order to get past just some of those initial sour elements. In kind of the phases of extraction, what really boiled down, the early parts of it can, can t taste sour. And so a way that you can kind of uh, experience this is you can pull a shot of espresso, let it run as long as you want, but take the first 10 seconds in a cup, the next 10 seconds in a separate cup, and then the third 10 seconds in yet a third cup, and take 
taste those three. What you'll notice is the first cup will be incredibly sour, which kind of just marks to us that those sour components, the acids that have really t like sour tangy taste notes come out kind of early on. So with lighter roasted coffees, those notes tend to prolong longer into the extraction. So we really need to push the extraction more. The easiest way to push extraction in espresso is higher ratio, not more contact time, not finer grind, more ratio. Since I started with 19 grams of coffee in the portafilter, that would mean I would want around 45, 48, or around that out. I got about 47 out on this pool, but it took around 50 seconds, which is quite long for, for a shot like that. We're still gonna taste it because whenever you're dialing in, as long as you're in that kind of sweet spot, which we kind of are, we got lucky on the first one because we did the fineness check, we're gonna go ahead and taste it and see if we're close to what we want. Uh, this could be tasty. Sometimes sometimes when we're, when we're breaking the rules, we're outside of the typical time zones that you read online on Wikipedia or wherever that is all wrong. It can still taste really nice. So I'm gonna stir it up. We'll give it a little sip. I anticipate this is gonna have kind of an acrid bitterness to it along with sourness because it seemed like there was a lot of channeling due to how fine it was since it took that long to brew. Usually what happens when it's taking that long and the drain is that slow, it's because it's so fine that the water can't evenly move through the grounds. And so they pick a few spots to expose. And so it slows down overall the extraction, but it's gonna make those areas really bitter. And then throughout the rest of the puck where the water was able to get through, it didn't get through much so it's pretty sour. So I'm thinking we're gonna have a mixture of sour and like a, an acrid bitterness. It's not as sour as I thought it would be, probably because we pulled such a long ratio, but that acrid bitterness is there. Will easily be fixed if we coarsen the grind up. Two clicks on this machine. I'm gonna just go a little coarser there. I'm hoping we can shed off even 15, 20 seconds. I tend to like to do these big ratios in faster times than typical. And the reason for that is the coarser you can grind your coffee, the less channeling you will have necessarily. When you have really fine coffee grounds all up next to each other, it's really hard for the water to get through. So they'll pick little different avenues to go through. The coarser you can make the grounds, the more even the water can get through it. And considering that ratio is the number one dictator or arbiter on ex extraction yield, we can just increase our ratio and go coarser on the grind setting. Faster time, faster espresso, we'll lose some body, but in the end, we're gonna have a more balanced cup. So again, we're gonna do all the steps the same because we only wanna change one variable at a time. I changed my grind size, which is obviously gonna change my time, but we're gonna do the same dose, same output, and then we're gonna do the same puck preparation. All right, so this one pulled in 35 seconds. We were able to cut off around 15-ish seconds or so. It has a lot more crema, which makes a lot of sense as well because there's a lot less channeling. So with less channeling, because we went coarser, we actually were able to increase the crema. Ironically, this is gonna have a bigger body than the previous shot, even though the previous shot was finer. Finer doesn't always mean more crema, but the coarser you go, you will begin to lose crema again. So there's kind of a sweet spot if you're wanting a thicker bodied cup. Now, if we go really, really coarse, we'll get next to none because it won't build up enough pressure to formulate the crema. But for right now, we do have a nice thicker shot. So we're gonna see if this has the balance that we're looking for, which is kind of difficult to do with lightly roasted coffees, especially when they're Kenya coffees. The acidity is much more balanced in it, but I'll say the sweetness isn't as, as much there. I would say that the, the kind of sourness is overtaking the cup. So what I wanna do now actually, is I would, I'm gonna actually coarsen it one more time. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna increase the ratio while I coarsen it. So I wanna increase the ratio. I wanna have roughly the same time, so, cause I think the water's going through the puck really nicely. Uh, it seems like it was extracting really well. So I'm going to go a little coarser, increase my ratio, and try to re retain kind of the same time, around 34, 35 seconds, to give me 19 in, about 50, 53 out. And hopefully that's going to increase our sweetness without losing the acidity because we went a little bit coarser. So hopefully that'll give us a more balanced cup. That's kind of how I'm thinking of it in my mind. You wanna isolate variables more intensely, but whenever you're at home and you have you know a small bag, if you feel confident in the change that you're thinking of, go ahead and go for it. It, but just make sure always taste your coffees and like I'm really close right here honestly I'm already very close I think this one more move is going to help us get straight to where we're wanting to go
So once more, I went one tick coarser, and the idea here is that I'm trying to get a more balanced shot. I want it, I want to be able to pull it a little longer. So as you see, this started to come out earlier than the other shots did, and it's flowing a lot faster. The viscosity is a lot lower because we're A, using a really lightly roasted coffee, and B, we're going quite coarse on the grind size because we're trying to get out as much as we can in a short time. So that one came out, we did 52 and actually 25 seconds. So maybe I overdid it on the grind size change, but it may be really nice. This is actually where I tend to live in when I'm using like a nine bar machine, something like that. As we all know, espresso can be kind of crazy. And especially when you're using a stock Gaja Classic Pro, the temperature kind of fluctuates quite a bit. And so I'm not actually doing temp surfing during this video. I, I have a whole video dedicated to tricks you can do um, with a stock Gaja. I'm not doing any of that here because I'm trying to make this as accessible as possible. But of course, if you're into Gajas, I also have a modded out video there, though it is now outdated with the new New modifications you can do, but that is something you can check out. So there are going to be fluctuations when you're using these cheaper machines because they're not out of the box. They're not really made for consistency as much as they are for just um, accessibility, I guess, uh, when it comes to being able to afford something that'll last a long time. These machines will last uh, forever. I'm thinking that it'll still be good even though it was really quick. We'll probably just suffer on body, but my bet is it'll be sweet. It'll have balance. The acidity will be nice and rounded. So let's see. Oh yes. Now that is more reminiscent of the name Juice Box. That has a lot of uh, like citrusy tangerine. It's got like um, caramelized orange peels, I guess you could say. Caramelized grapefruit. You have uh, some of that pith in there. There is that bitterness on the pith, and which I think is probably just because maybe something weird happened with the temperature in here during the shot. But um, in the end, this is actually a really nice shot. It was a happy accident that it went much faster than what I was uh, planning for. I don't get as much of the reds that they say, the strawberry jam or anything like that, but I do get lots and lots and lots of oranges and yellows throughout this cup. There's even a little bit of orange blossom in there, maybe a little coffee flower, but it's, um, it's a pretty nice espresso. It is a little tart. I'll updose to 19 and a half grams. I mean, that's half a gram more than what I've been doing. Uh, and hopefully that'll split the difference. These are steps that I'm not, I'm not familiar with this grinder. The steps could be bigger than I think. And so maybe if I go half a gram up, that will slow the shot down enough to get me up to that 30 second marker, 35 second marker with the same output. And hopefully what that will do is it will boost the body just a little bit and it will maybe give me uh, maybe a little bit more sweetness while muting out some of the uh, intense acidity. Although I, I, I really do uh, enjoy it here. I think this would make a great kind of micro cano or small Americano. So I think that at 25 seconds with a 52 gram yield that we probably had a decent enough grind size based off of the taste. All right, so far so good. And I want to say, while we're watching this, if you have espresso coming out of one of your two spouts, that's not a sign of channeling. That's just whichever way the espresso decides to fall out. It could be because your machine is a little bit uneven. It could just be, because that's the ergonomics of the actual portafilter, but that's not something to stress about. All right, perfect. So we got that right in around 31 seconds or so. So we added six or seven seconds. The body already looks a lot nicer. It looks a lot thicker uh, just based off of optics. So now I'm gonna grab a spoon if I can find one. Here's a spoon. And we're gonna give this a stir and a taste to see if we hit what we were looking for. Once we made that final adjustment, the ratio was truncated just a little bit. It was shortened a little bit because we went from 19 in, 53 out to 19 and a half in, 53 out. So just a small difference there. But overall, I think that we're gonna have a better tasting shot. I think this should give us more balance. And that harshness on the end, I think is gonna be covered by the body. Uh, that's at least my hope and my theory. So let's see how this goes. perhaps inherent in the coffee is gonna be kind of a little, that lingering finish. I remember I did brew this one time on filter before, and that was my critique is the finish wasn't great. So maybe that's just with this coffee. Again, it could be the temperature issue on this machine, but I think this espresso is essentially where it needs to be. We took a, some of that harsh acidity that we had in the previous shot, even though I think it was still nice. It was a little harsher than I think most people would enjoy. And so by updosing a little bit, we are able to extend the time, we we're able to kind of smooth out those rough edges. But the real question is, does Ugo like it? Let's 
intérpretes. All right, so that's how to dial in a lightly roasted coffee. So just to kind of go over everything one more time so that you can have the tools in your arsenal when you're confronted with dialing in a new bean, the first thing to do is set kind of like your go-to recipe, whatever that is for your machine. If you have something with a smaller basket and you need 15 grams and your typical recipe is 15 in, 40 out, well then go to that. When you're getting the grind size, go through it, listen, feel, see how gritty it is. And you wanna start roughly around where it can hold your fingerprint. It can hold a little peak if you set it. You just don't want it completely powdery to where it's pill balling out of your grinder. So we wanna start there and get in our kind of our zone. If you're not within the zone, things can get really weird really quickly. Quantum physics, essentially. Once we get into that, that kind of golden zone, we can start making the minor changes. We can change the ratio a little bit. We can change the time a little bit. We can change the grind size. We can change kind of like, in theorize what we're wanting in our cup and trying to chase that. So the easiest thing to do is ask yourself, is this sharp, pungent, bitter? Is it too thick? Is it too uh, viscous? Is it uh, too oily? Is it leaving too much of a coating on my tongue? Well, you're probably on the under extracted side. You might want to push your extraction some. And there's a slew of ways to do that, simply increasing the ratio. So you don't have to go through all these steps and think through every single one. If you need to just push extraction, let it run a couple extra seconds to get more yield out. Go ahead and taste that because once you start changing grind sizes, that's when things can kind of get a little crazy. But of course, at the beginning, that is going to be a necessity. You're going to have to change your grind size. But then once you find an area where it's pulling roughly in parameters that you're used to, that's when you can make the micro adjustments to your taste. The way you drink espresso is not going to be the way that I drink espresso. It's not going to be the way that your mother or your sister or your uh, partner or your dog drinks espresso. So you're going to have to do it based off of your taste. And I'm not going to really be able to help you more than that because because what I like is not what you like. We're all from different parts of the world and we have grown up on different foods and we have different flavored desires. With lighter roasted coffees, you really need to make sure you're pushing extraction more than darker roasted counterparts. And this is because the coffee is not as brittle, it's not as easily dissolved into the water. There's more to get. And so if you get a little bit out of a lighter roasted coffees, you're gonna be focusing on those more harsh acids. With darker roasted coffees, since a lot of that's been roasted out during the roasting process, you can have a much shorter shot that's really pungent and has that bitter quality about it because there's not as much of those acids to be taken out because they were burned up. So with lighter coffees, push extraction, make sure your ratio is higher. You don't need a really long time. You can do an 18 second shot if you don't necessarily love texture and, and you'll, you could have a really nicely high extracted shot. Or you can push it really far. You could do a two minute long extraction on a nine bar shot. If it tastes good, it tastes good. It's probably channeling a lot, but who said a channeled shot can't taste good? You can't control the channels, you can't repeat the channels, but it's always worth trying the shot of coffee that comes out of your machine, regardless of the parameters, regardless of the look. Give it a try and then make changes from there. Obviously, if it's horribly channeling and it's very obvious that it is, I would not make a change following that unless it's because it was too fine. Because if it's channeling a lot, it could have been a puck preparation issue. When you're dealing with lightly roasted coffees, the puck integrity is really low compared to darker roasted coffees. The puck preparation is even more important with lightly roasted coffees. You'll see people in Italian coffee shops, you know, they just grind the coffee in a pour filter, they tamp and they put in. And I see arguments online of people saying, well, the Italian maestros, they don't do any of this puck preparation stuff, yada, yada, yada. It's because they're using charred Robusta that has, well, not all Robusta, but it has a heavy amount of Robusta in it that has a lot of puck integrity. And you don't need as much puck preparation because the water going through, even if it channels, it's going to give you that thick, viscous, heavy body. It's going to do the same thing over and over again because there's not much nuance to that. The lighter you roast your coffee, the less puck integrity there is, the more puck preparation is important. You need to ensure you have a consistent and repeatable puck preparation, and I highly recommend WDT for that and doing sort of a spirographic pattern with it, which I've got videos that you can check out for that. You'll be able to find the light roast coffee that's good for you, that's not sour, because guess what? A roast is not sour. Only 
sour extractions. Sour coffees don't exist, only sour extractions. Quote me on that. I don't like lightly roasted coffees because they're too sour. It's because you're taking your darker roasted coffees and you're applying the same exact parameters to the lightly roasted coffees. And of course it's gonna be sour. There's more to pull from a light roast, so you need to push the extraction. I hope this was helpful. If you enjoyed the video, please take a moment, hit the like, hit the subscribe. It really does help me a lot. I've got a Patreon below that you can check out. But that's about it for, for me today. And I hope that you all enjoyed this uh, as much as I enjoyed making it. Like me, I hope that you brew something tasty today and cheers.